I'd like to talk about Volvo. Like many other car makers, Volvo is transitioning towards electric propulsion. It even created its own electric brand called Polestar. And to launch the brand, Volvo figured it would be cool to create a top end, very expensive and highly exclusive sports coupe. It was called the Polestar One. It was a $200,000 plug-in hybrid machine that looked absolutely stunning. I mean, some people even compared it to a Ford Mustang, but that's not the point. The styling of the Polestar 1 harkened back to a very special era in Volvo's history. Uh, what Volvo was basically doing was reincarnating a model that had put it in a very similar situation as it is today. We have to roll all the way back to the early 1960s to discover where Volvo found inspiration for the styling of the Polestar 1. And this was the inspiration. It seems history is repeating itself once again because in the 1960s, Volvo brought out a sports coupe, a dedicated sports coupe called the P1800. And this is the model in question. This thing came out completely out of left field. Nobody expected Volvo to come out with a stylish two-seater sports coupe like this one, which kind of looked like an Aston Martin, but also tried to mimic the American sports coupe. Today, the P1800 is a classic. It is considered to be one of the most beautiful Volvos ever made, if not one of the most beautiful sports coupes of its era. So come with me, we'll go for a drive, and we're going to explore all the beautiful details of the 1971 Volvo P18e. Getting inside a Volvo P1800 is not as complicated as other sports cars of its era, because after all, this was created to be a grand tour. So, slipping yourself inside, even if you're a big guy like myself, isn't all that bad. Uh, the steering wheel is not adjustable, but thankfully the owner reduced its diameter because the original P1800 steering wheel is massive. This is a bit smaller. It's still made out of wood. It's made from Grant. And honestly, it seems like it fits in this car. Now, the type of wood used is not exactly the same as the rest of the dashboard, but still, it feels period correct. So the immediate sensation when sitting inside this old Volvo is how comfortable these thick leather seats are. I mean, I've, I've driven other early 70s European cars and this is by far one of the most comfortable ones. Um, it's also very spacious in here. I have, I have a lot of space for my feet, a lot of headroom, a lot of shoulder room. It is a comfortable machine to be in. And the dashboard is absolutely beautiful. And it feels like I'm sitting inside a vintage yacht or a vintage speedboat. And that's no coincidence. The designer behind the Volvo Volvo 1800 was Pelle Peterson. He was a Swedish designer that made a reputation in designing boats. This is why this vehicle has a lot of boat references to it. Look at how high the door sill is in this vehicle. It feels like I'm sitting in a performance marine machine. The build quality is still surprisingly impressive for a 40 year old car. I mean, the dashboard did kind of start cracking here in the front, but overall material quality has been resisting rather well to the sands of time. Now, some interesting quirks about this car. If you look at the big gauges right here, I like how everything is written in English. I have a tank. I have oil pressure, I have water temp, oil temp, everything is very detailed in English. I like that. But it's also written in Swedish. Right here for the climate control uh, controls, for some reason it's written both in, in English and in Swedish. It feels as though some people at Volvo just gave up during the translation process or maybe they ran out of budget. We began translating the gauges, everything was going very well. Oh my God, we're out of money. Let's put this part in Swedish. People will understand anyway, it'll be fine very weird decision from Volvo. And then there's the seating position. It really has this grand tour sports coupe feel. I feel like I'm sitting on the rear wheels. I have this long hood in front of me with nice bulges on each side of the car that allow me to really know where the hood is ending. And I have this long manual shifter that's angled towards me. And I love the feeling of this shifter nice long gears. I can really grab it and bring it down. It feels robust. It feels solid. That's really neat. For storage compartments, there aren't really any in a Volvo 1800. I only have this one right here. Open it up and it's basically replacing the car's glove box because I don't have one here on the right. I got the vintage period correct Volvo sound system, but the owner installed an aftermarket modern sound system right here, which makes sense because these old systems don't sound very good, only AM, FM, but the fact that it's still there just makes the car look and feel even more vintage. Now, one particular design trait of this cabin that I find uh, quite amusing is the way that this seatbelt buckle are designed right here in the middle. They appear to be some kind of a massive kill switch from a 
fighter jet, some kind of an eject button. Everything is made out of metal with big red levers. Now, Volvo invented the three-point seatbelt. In the early 1970s, three-point seatbelts were only starting to exist in cars, but Volvo had been selling it for over 20 years already. And if you look at the way this thing is made, it's quite interesting. You actually have to first remove it from its hook, and then you buckle yourself a bit like in a race car. You put it into place and the big metallic buckle clicks into place. And then you tighten it right here in the bottom and you're good to go. Now the switch gear in this old Volvo is absolutely brilliant and also rather adorable. Beginning with the HVAC controls right here, I got this massive button for the fan speed, pull it twice for different fan speeds. This is pretty neat. Um, and the controls for uh, adjusting where you want the air to flow in the car are hidden underneath. So I mentioned that everything here is written in Swedish and in English, and then I just pull the buttons here underneath um, to you know, either defrost or send it to my feet or in my face. That's pretty neat as well. I got my good old ashtray right here because in the 1970s, everybody smoked cigarettes with my trusty cigarette lighter right here on the right. And the rest of the switch gear is all here on the left side. I got my wiper button right there. I got my headlights right here and then my high beams and my four ways also hidden behind the steering wheel. And the rest is pretty much straightforward. I got a grab handle right here on the right for my passenger. And apart from that, we're good to hit the road. All right, so let's fire this bad boy and see what it has. You can hear the gas pump. Huh, it starts in one shot. We're good to go, let's hit the road. Oh man, this thing is fun. <laughs> Driving old cars is amazing. Now the immediate sensation behind the wheel of this old Volvo P1800 is how laid back everything feels. I don't feel like driving this thing quickly. I just feel like cruising in it on a country road. I feel very comfortable in this thing. It's also very confidence inspiring. I feel safe in the Volvo P1800. And as you can hear, it's also very loud. There's not much in the way of sound insulation in this cabin. This was the reality of pretty much all sports cars back in the day. Now the story behind the P1800 is actually quite interesting because Volvo really wanted to enter the high-end sports coupe market. It tried in the 1950s with the P1900 and that was kind of a failure. It didn't really work, work in, in Volvo's favor. Now the P1800 would be its second attempt. When it came out in the early 1960s, it was very underappreciated. People didn't really understand why Volvo was selling this vehicle. It was also rather expensive for the time. A Volvo sports car in the early 1960s really didn't make sense. Remember, in the early 1960s, Volvo mostly had a reputation of making family-oriented and safety-focused vehicles. But the, P the, the 1800 just came out of left field. Nobody expected this car to look the way it looked and perform the way it did. Now, what really allowed this vehicle to gain popularity and respect was the fact that it became the star of the TV series, The Saint starring Roger Moore. And the story behind that is also quite interesting because the producers originally wanted a Jaguar E-Type, but Jaguar couldn't supply a car on time for the show. So the producers turned to Volvo and asked them, hey, can we use this 1800? It looks quite dashing. Why not use it for the TV show? And Volvo loved the idea. To, for, for Volvo, that was an opportunity to put a spotlight on the P1800. And that was probably the best marketing idea from Volvo in the time. The P1800 was suddenly everywhere. It was the sexy Scandinavian sports coupe driven by none other than Roger Moore. Now the early cars had a 1.8 liter carbureted four cylinder. This one has a two liter. Actually the two liter engine came out in 1969 and in 1970 arrived electronic fuel injection by Bosch. Now the power output in this one is the highest spec of any 1800. It pumps out about 140 horsepower and about 130 foot pounds of torque. It's made into a four speed manual transmission. But what's interesting about this transmission is that it has an overdrive. I just lower the lever right here and there you go, it's in fifth gear. And then it really becomes one hell of a cruiser. I can just trot around this thing on a country road with very little throttle input and it's surprisingly comfortable. What amazes me about this car is how modern it feels, even by today's standards. I don't have power steering, everything is direct, but the car feels very solid, very well planted on the road, which is still a Volvo trait today. 
There's this sensation of solidity in the B1800 that's absolutely brilliant. It feels like of good quality. It feels like I would not die if I crashed this thing. Mind you, I, don't, I wouldn't really want to crash this thing because if you look at the way my legs are exposed, I don't have much in the way of crash protection in front of me. This dashboard feels rather flimsy, but the experience behind the wheel is absolutely amazing. Another fun fact about the cabin is how well ventilated it was. I have these little traps here on the bottom where my feet are. Now to film this video, I have to close the windows or else you really wouldn't hear anything. But we open the traps down there. Now the air circulates through the cabin, through these traps, and back out through some other vents in the rear of the car. You can actually see them on the side of the vehicle. Now these vents will take the air back out. It's also quite handy when you're driving with the windows down because it's gonna eliminate any kind of turbulence you may have. All of that was created to create a luxury experience. And this is the essence of a luxury sports coupe, of a grand touring machine. The rear seats, there's actually room back there for two children or two small adults. Volvo really wanted to make a performance sports coupe that could also be used year round. It wanted it to be a Volvo, which meant it had to be reliable, easy to live with and easy to maintain. As a matter of fact, the owner tells me that he drives his 1800 in any kind of conditions except for winter of course he used it to go to school this was his university car he would use it to go to school and he still takes it out on a regular basis he lets people drive it he loads some gear in it he puts his children in the car and he says he has had absolutely no reliability issues with this engine now the power delivery of this four cylinder is not spectacular it's also very trashy very loud um, i mean it feels like a much bigger engine than it actually is because that's what four cylinders were in the 1970s. They were much more robust than they are nowadays. Uh, you know, and it's not very rev happy. Here I am at 4,000 RPM, 4,500, it's so loud. Fourth gear, and there you go, I'm pretty much topping out. Like earlier, I had a Chevy Corvette following me, and forget about it, I could not like escape from this guy. I had to pull over on the side of the road for him to pass me. But oh my God, driving this thing is just amazing. It's such a time capsule. And it feels like I put on so many miles on this car. I could drive off into the distance, have a, have a nice little road trip with my friends or family, and just enjoy the open road. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of grand touring. It's always hard to turn these things around. You know, you're always afraid of what a modern crossover will do. I mean, people look at these cars, they respect them, but they don't seem to realize how scared the driver is when he's, he's, he's going around in modern traffic. I have barely enough power to keep up with modern traffic in this thing, but I still can do it. All right, so launching out of the hole here, no traffic, make sure this car doesn't get smashed. First gear, 5,000 RPM, second gear. <laughs> the transmission is amazing. It's so precise, I can really give it, I can grab it by the, the scruff of the neck and really put it in the gear. The clutch bite is also really good. I mean, there is some play in the steering wheel, but it's honestly not that bad. I've seen much worse from old Italian supercars. The level of ergonomics in this old Volvo is absolutely astonishing for the model year. Another interesting fact about the 1971 model, this was the most powerful spec before the vehicle start, started to get muffled by new emissions regulations in the United States. Just like the American car makers, Volvo also got hit hard by stricter emissions, which forced the company to take the vehicle off the market in 1973. And by then it had morphed into something completely different. It had become a two-door station wagon. Those are actually even rarer than the sports coupe. Personally, I find the styling of this one to still be absolutely amazing. It is a beautiful, elegant machine. From the side, it has a clean, streamlined look. But from the front and the rear, it kind of looks like an Aston Martin or some kind of a British sports car. And that's no coincidence. Volvo had very big targets with the 1800. It really wanted to take on cars from Jaguar and Aston Martin. And as a matter of fact, the early models were built in England. The gauges in this car are also built in England. They're built by Smith, they're British. This was really destined for the British and the American market for high income customers who wanted something a bit different and something a bit more quirky than a Jaguar or an Aston Martin. And the fact that it was starred in the show The Saint really gave him the cred it needed to be taken seriously by these types of customers. Oh man, this is fun. It's interesting to drive a car with only four gears nowadays. Yes, I have an overdrive, but when I, when I kick it in though, I really need to commit. It's like, okay, I'm in fifth gear now. I'm gonna stay here for a while. Here's a good example where overdrive is a bit weird. I'm going down this hill, 
4,000 RPM in fourth gear. I'll put it in overdrive in fifth. Here I am. But then the traffic in front of me is braking, so I need to take it off again. I did the wonder why Volvo just didn't put a five-speed transmission from the get-go. Now, I get that this drivetrain is supposed to be quite reliable, and the driver, the owner, tells me that he has never had any issues, even with the overdrive system, but this feels quite rough when I put it in. Ugh. Here I am in overdrive. <laughs> off. <laughs> what a machine. There's also really good visibility. Okay, fine. I don't have a passenger side mirror. I have this tiny little driver's side mirror here. I don't see much out of it. But the windshield is nicely curved. I have great forward visibility. Same with the rear. I have a nice wide rear view mirror right here. It allows me to see a nice panoramic view of the rear of the car. And honestly, it's not hard to see out of. It's actually quite easy to live with. Very easy car to drive. Normally when I get in these vehicles, I need to adapt myself to like the older technology. This is the weird seating position, the harsh transmissions. This wasn't the case in the 1800. I just got in. It was a bit tricky to get my legs underneath the steering wheel, but that's about it. I just still can't believe how comfortable these seats are. I could spend a lot of hours driving this car for a long road trip and never would I feel like my back is breaking apart. Now that was f What's interesting about driving the Volvo 1800 is how modern it still feels by today's standards. What's also kind of sad for Volvo is that although this car was underappreciated when it came out, today it's one hell of a classic. As a matter of fact, it took almost 30 years for this vehicle to be acknowledged for what it was. So much so that it now serves as inspiration for current Volvo and Polestar designs. And some companies are even retro modding these things into modern sports cars that look like the original vehicle. I encourage you to Google the Cyan version of this vehicle and it looks even more attractive than this. It's basically an old 1800 with modern Volvo drivetrain and it's been resto modded to look even more badass. This is the perfect example of when a car maker tries very hard to change its image. It comes with a cost, but in the long run, it defines the company. It completely alters people's perception of what they should expect from the brand. Now, if you're looking to get your hands on a Volvo P1800, uh, the prices have skyrocketed in recent years. There was a time where you can get these things for nothing. Now, well-kept models are climbing 40, 50, and even $70,000 US. That's still relatively low if you compare it to other sports cars of its era sports cars that it was competing against. Look at the old Aston Martins, the old Jaguars. They're worth a lot more than this Volvo, but none of those British cars can claim to have a Guinness world record of 3 million miles. That's right. Somebody drove 3 million miles in this Volvo right here. How's that for a reliable sports car? <laughs>